Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm just checking to see if this is being recorded, and it is. All right. So in this se uh, section, we're doing the converting uh, between radical forms and exponential forms. So let's do some quick review. Um, the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is equal to 2. Square root of 9 is equal to 3. Uh, the square root of 16 is equals to 4. All of these are called perfect squares because you get a nice, your answer is a nice number. Okay, it's a perfect square. Uh, an example of something that is not a perfect square could be the square root of 8. How do we simplify this? Well, uh, we break it down. 4 times 2, and then we have square root of 4 times square root of 2, and then out of this, you get 2 times square root of 2. Okay, so this is how you will simplify it. Okay, something that is not a perfect square. Another, exa another example would be the square root of uh, 12. Notice that 12 contains a perfect square as one of the factors, which is 4 times 3. And that will give you 2 times square root of 3. Okay, these are, this is how you can simplify them. Okay. All right. So now, what do we do next? Well, converting radical forms and exponential forms. So let's move on to the next page. What that means is this. <clears throat> so if you have, going back to the square root of 4, this is the same thing as writing. Well, we know the answer, right? The answer is 2. But you may not know that this, this can also be written as 4 to the 1 half. This is exponential form, and this will be radical form. So in a more general setting, when you have a number raised to some power, and that power happens to be a fraction, m over n, then this can be written as this, the nth root of a to the m power. Here's an example. I have to simplify, for instance, 4 raised to the 3 halves. Okay, how do we do that? So what we do is we do the square root of 4 raised to the third power. Now you may be wondering, what happened to the 2? This 2, where did it go? Well, actually it's there. But when it comes to the square root, we don't write it. Okay? We only write numbers, the index that is higher than two, like the cube root, the fourth root, and so on. So if you don't see it, like in this case here, that is the square root. So in this case, what you do, you do the parentheses first, square root of four is two, and then you raise it to the third power. That will give you two times two times two, which is eight. Now be careful, I've seen students, what they do is they multiply the base and the exponent, and they say, oh, the answer is six, which is not true, okay? Be careful with that, all right? So here's another rule. If you have a raised to some negative exponent, then we can switch it into a fraction. Remember this rule, okay? Remember that rule. And here's an example of one. We can actually do the same. We can say four to the negative three halves. Well, what is that equals to? Let's do it here. That will be equals to one over four to the three halves. And we already know what that is equals to. It's one over eight, okay? So this is gonna take a little bit of practice, but we need to know this, okay? Just a reminder, the n here is the index. So the index of a square root, even though you're not going to see it written, is 2. I'm writing it so you can see it, but they don't write it. They only write it when it's higher than 2, like the q root, 4th root, and so on, okay? Let's do another one. Let's do this one. Let's do... Let's do 8 raised to the 4 
third power. What is that? Well, let's write it in the radical form and see what that is. So this will be the cube root of eight raised to the fourth power. Okay. So let me see. Yep, it's being recorded. So what do we do with this? What is the cube root of eight? So we need to find a number that when you multiply it by itself three times, gives you eight. And that number is two. Okay, because if you take two times two times two, gives you eight. So one, two, three is why you have a three there, which is the index, okay? And then you raise it to, to the fourth power. So this will be two times two times two times two gives you 16. Be careful, this is not equals to eight. As some people may think, they think that they just multiply four times two, they multiply the base and the exponent to get an answer and that's not right, okay? All right, so now that we know how to do that, we can simplify more complex uh, problems, okay? For instance, how do you simplify the square root of 48? How do we do that? Okay, well, what we need to do is that we need to find, uh, we need to find a way to factor, factor 48. Uh, how about 16 times three? That is equals to 48. This is where knowing your tables comes handy. You really need to know this, okay? So then you, you break it down, 16 times three. I know that 16 is a perfect square. And then because of that, I get a four. Now, the square root of three, it is what it is, it's going to remain, that three is going to remain inside the square root. And this is how you simplify it, okay? Now, how do we add them? How do we add, for instance, the square root of 48 plus the square root of 12? Okay, how do we do that? The first thing that we notice and is a requirement is that they have to have the same index. Remember what the index is. It's the invisible two in this case. We don't write them, right? So in the index here, we know that the index is two. So that's good. So that's something to keep in mind because they have a, if they have a different index, then you cannot add them, okay? For instance, you cannot add this. The index here is two and the index here is three. You cannot add them, okay? There's nothing you can do. Another thing is you cannot add them if you have this. Oops, sorry, I meant to write a two. Well, in this case, they do have the same index. The index is two, but now the um, radicand is three. The radicand is the inside of this, it's three. So you cannot combine them, okay? Now, going back to the example that I was doing. So in this case, we have the same index, but they have different radicands, right? Now we do know that the square root of 48 is equals to, we did it here, is equals to four times the square root of three. That we know, we did it. Plus then how do I simplify the square root of 12? Okay, well, we know 12 is equal to four times three, right? So from the four, you get a two, and this three will remain inside the square root. So what do we have? We have two times the square root of three. So after I have done all of this, then you cut it again. The index is two. Remember, am I gonna write that two always? 
okay? And the radicand is the same. It's three. So now I can add them. And how do I add them? It's very easy. Four plus two is six times the square root of three. That's how you can combine these. But remember, you have to do some work before you can actually get to that point. And this is where it's going to take practice from you guys to learn how to do this. This is a must. This is a must. This is what they teach you in ninth grade, sometimes in elementary, how to simplify this stuff. Okay. So let's do another one before we move on to something else. Let's do um, square root of three. And the square root of 27. Well, you might say, well, it cannot be done because even though they have the same index, the radicands are the same. And I was like, no, remember, this is already simplified, but this one is not. So how do we break down 27, square root of 27? Well, 9 times 3. Square root of 9 is 3. And square root of 3 will remain that way. So how do what do we have? What do I have here? I have this. See? The radicand is the same. The index is the same. So now I can add them. How do I add them? Well, here's a 1. 1 plus 3 is 4 times the square root of 3. And that's it. Again, no need to write it to there. All right. And so it's there. All right. All right. So now let's move on to something that looks more complicated using variables. OK. Let's do the square root of 96 and the square root of 54. Let's simplify this first. OK. I know that 96 divided by 2 is 48. And 48 is 16 times 3. Okay, so I'm breaking down 96 into pieces. This is part of the learning process. So what do I'm looking for? I'm looking for perfect squares. That's a perfect squares. Okay, 3 and 2, if you multiply them back, will give you 6, which is not a perfect square. So what does this mean? It means that the square root of 96 will be broken down into 16 times 6 and we can do this, and this gives you 4 times the square root of 6. So I have to do all that work to simplify the square root of 46, 96. What about 54? 54 is divided by 2 is 27. Well, I know that 2 is not a perfect square, but 27 may contain a perfect square factor. So 9 times 3 times 2. So that is what? 9 times 6 is 54. We know already that the 6 is not a perfect square, but the 9 is. So what does that mean? It means that the square root of 9 is 3 times the square root of 6. Okay? So we know that we can combine these if we needed to, okay? So I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to go on to the next example, but remember this. I did that, I did that on purpose. Let's move on to the next. So now we need to do this. You see, we have u, a variable, times 
the square root of 96 times u times v squared minus 5v times the square root of 54 u cubed. Okay? So it looks messy, but it's not that bad. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down. First of all, u to the first will remain there. It's going to remain inside the square root. u square, if you only had the square root of v square, that answer would be v. Okay. If you had the square root of u cubed, this would be the same as u squared times u, and the square root of u squared will be u, and then you will have a u inside the square root. So I'm breaking it into pieces. This is what this is going on, okay? So let's do the first one. So I already have a u upside. Now remember what the square root of 96 was. It was 4 times square root of 6. So I'm going to have 4 times u, this u. I'm going to get a v out, this v. And what remains inside the square root? Well, the 6. And the u. Minus. OK. What is the square root of 54? is 3 times the square root of 6. This 3 that comes outside will multiply the 5. That will give you 5 times 3 is 15, negative 15. Then you have a v that was already outside. And we said that the square root of u cubed, u cubed, was this. So I'm going to have a u. And what's, what am I going to have inside? I'm going to have a 6 and a u. So now you check, can I combine these? Well, you do have the same index. And you do have the same radicand. OK, so I can combine them. And also notice that these guys are like terms, the ones upside. I have 4uv minus 15uv will be negative 9. VU or UV is the same thing. Times the square root of 6U. So this, guys, is your answer. But this type of exercise, you can expect to take at least a page of work because you have to break it down. You have to analyze uh, every little term, which is what I did here. OK? So this is going, this is going to be towards the end of module four. OK? All right. Now, let's do rationalizing the denominator. Rationalizing the denominator. Denominator. OK? And what does, what does that mean? Well, first of all, let's talk about rationalizing. It means that we're going to go from having an irrational denominator, like for instance, this denominator, the square root, the square root of two is irrational. So how do we rationalize it? All right, so this is the process. We multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. Now, mind you that the square root of 2 over square root of 2 is equals to 1. So I'm not really changing the numerical value. All I'm doing is changing from having an irrational denominator to a rational denominator, from irrational to rational. And this is the process. So now, 1 times the square root of 2, I get the square root of 2. 
over square root of 2 times square root of 2 will be square root of 4. But I know square root of 4 is 2. So this number here is the same number as square root of 2 over 2. The difference is that now your denominator is 2. 2 is a rational number. So you went from having an irrational denominator to now having a rational denominator. And this process is called rationalizing the denominator. So pay attention closely to what they're asking you, the description of the question. OK, let's do more. Let's look at this example. It's like, what is this? OK, so what we're going to do first, we're going to rationalize the denominator. And the first step we're going to do is to break him down like this. OK, that will be the first step. Then I notice that the denominator, square root of 7, is irrational. Now, how do you know it's, ir it's irrational? Well, use your calculator. Notice that if you put in a square root of 7, a square root of 2, a square root of 5, oh, there's a bunch of irrational numbers. And, and, and if you look at the decimal expansion, you will not see a repetition. That's what makes it irrational. Okay? For instance, one third, just one third, is rational. Why? Because I get this. You see? Repetition. So that's a rational number. Irrational, I'm going to do this in my calculator to show you. Okay, because I don't know that on top of my head. I get this. The square root of 7 is equal to 2 times 64, 57, uh, 5, 1, 3. Notice that there's no pattern whatsoever. Okay? So that makes it irrational. All right. So now let's rationalize it. So I'm going to do the same trick. Oops, mistake. I'm supposed to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 7. My denominator would be 7. My numerator would be the product of the 2, would be the square root of 21. So now, my this number is the same number as the square root of 21 over 7. Now, you may say, what, what did you get 7 from? Well, remember, you're supposed to multiply Square root of 7 times square root of 7, which gives you square root of 49, which is 7. There. Okay. So that is how we do this. So pay attention closely to that description. Okay. Then we have more complicated ones. Like, for instance, let's say you have this. It's like, whoa, what is that? Is my denominator irrational? The answer is yes, because even though 1 is a rational number, a beautiful rational number, when you add it to an irrational number, then the whole denominator becomes irrational. So how do we do that? How do we rationalize it? Okay, so now we're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. This is a term that I used last lecture, the conjugate of the denominator. And the conjugate of the denominator will just be this. Remember I did the conjugate of complex numbers? The conjugate of 2 plus i is 2 minus i. And I show you how to do that. If you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please watch that video again. Okay? I did that last time. So let's see now. Now, remember also that when you multiply in conjugate, this is a unique property that belongs to conjugates. When you multiply them, the only thing that really matters is the product of the first two terms. 
and the product of the last two. And you say, wait a minute, you're not foiling. Remember, you can foil it. In fact, you should foil it, but you will see that the middle terms will cancel. In fact, let me do it in slow motion to show you. One times one is one. This is what I'm talking about. You see? Now, let's go to four is two, so all this denominator becomes negative one. I'm going to write that denominator in a minute, but let me finish the numerator. So now I have to multiply. Uh, nine times one is nine minus nine times square root of two is nine times square root of two. Okay. Now, my answer will be nine times minus nine times square root of two over don't forget that one minus the square root of two will be one minus two. And that denominator is just negative one. Now you might be wondering, I don't like that negative one in the bottom. Can I do it something? And the answer is yes. You can make it look better, okay? Okay, what you can do is that this negative, 9 divided by negative 1 is negative 9. Negative 9 divided by negative 1 is positive 9 times the square root of 2. This will be your answer. That way, you don't have to put a negative 1 under it. Um, and that's it. That's all you have to do. So. The nice thing about the recording is that you can watch this again and again and again until you get it, okay? Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's say you have this ugly thing. And they ask you to rationalize the denominator. Okay, so a square root of five is irrational, plus one makes it, the whole thing is irrational. So here's the process. What is the conjugate of the denominator? Well, it's this. You see, that's the conjugate. All you have to do is keep everything the same, except that the middle term changes sign. If this is a plus, then the conjugate will have a minus. That's it. Okay. Then I'm going to multiply the denominator first. Why? Because I'm going to take advantage of the fact that when you multiply the uh, conjugates, the middle terms cancel. I'm going to take advantage of that. So 1 minus, you know what? Let me write them out because some of you don't still don't believe me. So here it is. Where did I get the 25 from? Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is equal to square root of 25. That's going to turn into 5. I know that. But here it is. You see this? Beautiful. Right now, I'm just working with the denominator. Square root of 5 is going to be 5. Square root 25 is going to be 5. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have 1 minus 5 will be negative 4. That would be my denominator. Let's look at the numerator. That might be a little bit more messy. So I'm going to have 1. I'm foiling. 1 times 1 is 1. Minus square root of 5 plus square root of 3 minus square root of 15. How did I get 15? 3 and 5, 15. Okay. Can I combine these little things? No, you cannot. Even though they have the same index, the radicands are the same, different, and you cannot. The only thing you can do is to move this negative to the top 
just say as yes I, as I did before and that's it not a pretty answer but that's the way it is okay so this is going to take a lot of practice guys so reach out to NDC tutoring for one-on-one -on -one tutoring NDC NDC tutoring I already sent you the link. If you don't have it, just type it in Google, MTC Tutoring, and you can go to any of the campuses that you prefer. That's where they have the one-on-one -on -one tutoring, okay? And it's free. You don't have to pay for it. All right, now we're gonna do uh, solving. This is solving. radical equation. Equations. Okay. Solving radical equations. So what does it look like? Here's here's an equation. That's what it looks like. We have a variable which is the radical inside the square root of x. Okay, that's the square root of x. You might guess what the answer here is. The answer would be 16. Why? Because if you take 16, square root of 16 gives you 4. Okay. But guessing is not is not wise because these things these things get complicated and we need to develop a mechanical system. If you remember, I told you that this is the same thing as this. Those two things are the same. Okay. And it might help you see that if you had this instead, remember your goal is to solve for x. Then in order for me to get rid of that one half, this one half is to square it. Because if I have the one half times two is one. So this one half times this two is one. So you got x to the one. Now we don't need to write the one there, but that's what it is. So in this case, I need to square both sides. You see this? This is how I get my answer. Okay. Do you have to do that always? No. I'm teaching you as to why this happens. But as long as you know what the index is, then you need to raise it to that index. Okay. All right. Let's do more. Let's do this. You see, now we have a radical equation where the index is two, and I need to see that this is a single term equals to another single term, which is the five. So this is ready to be raised to the second power. So now this cancels. All you have left is the inside, which is called the radicand. So in other words, the square root is gone. And now on the other side, you have square root of 5, which is 25. And then you solve for x. Oops. 25 plus 9 is 34. OK. Now you can see that if you check your answer, which you're supposed to do, you are required to check your answer. If you replace this x with, um, with uh, to, uh, 34, do you get five? That's the question. So let's see, 34 minus nine is equals to 25 
and we know that the square root of 25 is 5 and you're done. So that works. So the answer, the solution set is 34. Okay. All right. Let's do another one. So this one is a little bit more complicated. So now we have variables on both sides and that's more work, but the principle is the same. What we have in our favor is the fact that this is a single term <clears throat> raised equals to another single term, just like I did before. Okay. So that means then, in fact, I'm going to leave that there for now because I'm going to check the work later. That means that I need to square both sides. You're squaring both sides so that you can get rid of the square root here. Here you get x squared. And on the other side, since you have a single term, a single square root, and you're squaring it, all you have left there would be 3x minus 2. Okay, that's what's going on here. In other words, this and this cancels. All we have left is the radican, which is the inside of the square root. That's called a radican. And what do we have now? Well, now this is a quadratic equation. And we want to make sure that when you have a quadratic equation, we want to write it in this form. Why? Because then we can solve for it, for x. So how do we do that? All right, so I'm going to have the x here, x squared. This term goes to the other side. This negative 2 goes to the other side. Don't forget to change the signs, OK? Don't forget to change the sign. Be careful with that. That is a big, big issue. <clears throat> so now I'm going to factor this thing. And I know that some of you still know, don't know how to factor. And you need to make sure that you learn how to factor. OK? So now, it seems to me that I have two potential solutions. And notice that I'm calling them potential. Because at this point, I don't know if they're going to work. And I need to check them, both of them. Okay, both of them. Okay, so now I need to check one at a time. So I'm going to start with one. And where do I check them? I check them into the original equation, not the one that you square, not the one that you get after you square both sides. In other words, you're not going to check them here. Do not check there. You want to check them here. So I'm going to start with 1. When x is 1, I get 1. 3 times 1 minus 2. 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2 is 1. Let's go to 1, 1. So that works. All right. So that means that in my solution set, so far, one works. Let's check two. Let's check it in blue. Okay. So here it is. When x is two, I'm gonna use that little space. I have two. Three times two is six. Remember, I'm replacing this x with two, so that becomes six minus two. And I get six minus two is four. Let's go to four, two. So that works too. So both of them work. But don't assume that the moment that you reach this point, that these are your answers. Just pause and think. Think that you have to check both of them. And I did that. Okay? I did that and both of them work. So your answer are 1 and 2. And you, that's, this is called the, the solution set. So that means that 
uh, members in that set are the solution to the problem. Which members are there? One and two. Okay. All right. Let's do another one. Okay. Oops, sorry, that's a sad. Equals to zero. Okay. So we have two terms on the left and we have zero on the right. It seems complicated, but what we need to do is to have a single term on the right and a single term on the left. So we're going to do that. I'm going to move this term to the other side. Mm -hmm. So now I have a single term on the right and a single term on the left. Why is that a good thing? Because now I can square each of them. So now what I have is 5x plus 12 equals to 7x plus 16. That's what I have. The square roots are gone because I raised it to the same power as the index. So they disappear. Okay. If this had been cube roots, then I will raise it to the third power and so on. If it was the fourth root, you raise it to a fourth power and so on. So now what do I do? Well, now I just have to solve this linear baby equation. So let's see. What would be the easiest way? Uh, I'm going to move this guy over here. And this guy over here. So this is negative 4 equals to uh, 2 x divided by 2, x is negative 2, okay? And remember, you're supposed to check and everything else, okay? The checking, I'm going to leave, leave it up to you, all right? Check to make sure that this is the answer. Right now, I don't know. It's a potential answer until you know for sure that after you check it into the original equation, that indeed is all of it is equal to 0 but you need to do the checking, okay? Now, let's do the last one. Here it is. Here's an example. This is x minus 4 equals to this thing. This one is somewhat similar to, let me show you which one, to this exercise. You see this? It's somewhat similar. Why? Because I have variables on both sides. Now, the difference here is that in this example, I had a single x, single term. Here I don't. But the good thing is that the one radical is by itself. That's a good thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to square both sides. Now, when I square the radical, when I square the square root, I only get negative 4x plus 28. That's the easy part. What is difficult, I'm going to do it here, is what happens when you square this guy. What does that mean? Well, it means that this is twice. It means that you have to FOIL. you have to combine like terms you see it's a lot of work guys so you make sure that you don't make a mistake so that is what I get on my left hand side so here it is so 
So now I have a quadratic equation again. And remember, you want to have it in this form. That means that I need to move all this, this and this term to the right, to the left. So here it is, x squared, negative 8x. This negative 4x becomes positive. So I'm going to have negative 4x. This 28 becomes negative 28. OK, so I'm going to have 16 minus 28 is negative 12. OK, so please pay attention to this. I'm moving this guy to the other side. That becomes positive 4x minus 8x gives you negative 4x. 16, I'm moving this 28 becomes negative 28 plus 16 is negative 12. Then I need to factor this. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Oh, that looks like that. So one of the answers could be 6 or negative 2. Okay. And now we need to check. And what do I check? <clears throat> I check on the original. I'm going to check one of them and see what happens. I'm erasing this because I need to go back to the original problem, which is this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with negative 2. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. And I can tell you right now that I should stop. Why? Because the square root of a number cannot give you a negative output. Let me repeat that again. When you take the square root of a number, cannot give you a negative output. So that means that negative 2 is not an answer. OK, so no matter what's inside here, I will never end up with a negative 6. It doesn't work like that, OK? Remember, complex numbers is one thing. Right now, in this exercises, this particular exercise, we're not doing complex numbers, OK? What happens when you do 6? So let's do uh, 6. OK, so 6. 6, uh, six minus 4 is 2. <clears throat> 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. That is ugly. And what is what is negative 28 plus sorry, negative 24 plus 28 is 4. Now square root of 4, 2. So this works. So what is my answer? My only answer is 6. Not negative 2, because negative 2 will not work. That, that, that root, that number that does not work, this is called a strenuous root. I call it garbage because it doesn't work. Okay? But the only that the only that only one that works is six. So make sure that you check your answers. Do not assume that once you reach this point that you're done. You're gonna go crazy because Alex will say, no, that's not the answer. Because if you put negative two and six as your answer, Alex will say, no, that's not your answer. The answer is only six. Okay. So this is the end of the recording. I'm going to be sending this to you now. Uh, this is to you know make sure that we completed the second lecture for uh, module four. Uh, remember that. Um, anyways, so we'll talk about it later. Thank you so much. Uh, please rewatch this as many times, and I wish you the best luck for test four. Okay. So let me end the recording now.